Good morning, this is Richard back at you. Wednesday morning, 48 degrees outside Denver, Texas, guys. Woo! And we got shorts on, we're crazy, ain't we? But hey, look at this beautiful Lincoln here, guys. This thing needs 20s and a couple turbos on it. Wouldn't that look cool? Now, we're gonna rebuild this tranny. This car's been in the gentleman's family for a long time. It ain't going anywhere. So the tranny's having issues, I believe, in third gear. So we're gonna repair it, get the tranny out and rebuild it. We got Cody here this morning. We got Trent over there hanging out, hiding. What you, the he's writing the VIN number down, guys, getting the ticket ready. We'll still run a computer check on this car, even though it's that it's that old of a car, it still has a computer connector. So we'll just want to see if we have any engine codes or anything like that. We got Anthony's GMC all the way from Colorado, guys. We're fixing to be going in and tearing down. We also have the Dodge here from Colorado. We got finished this morning. We got it full of fluid, fixing to go test drive it. We got a couple more Dodges here that we've got done. We've got to start putting in and pulling the trucks back in and stuff like that. So we got a, our hands full definitely for today. Well, let's get in here and look at some other cool stuff that we do here. Uh, we're gonna be sponsoring a race here coming up uh, September, I believe the 20th, nope, or excuse 30th. me, October, the, is it the 30th? October 30th. Uh, here in Amarillo, it's a big tire, small tire shootout type thing. Uh, it's gonna be junior dragsters. Uh, they're going to be a, a outlaw street class. Uh, going to be quite a few classes there, so it's going to be a really good race to go to. If you're around Amarillo, uh, schedule to come come and see some really really fast cars. But guys, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to help them out with some trophies and stuff like we do uh, not every year, but when they ask us to, we step up and, and and do it for them. But you can see here we've already started. Me and Trent got in here and Cody started trying to figure out some cool stuff to make. So what we took is a this is a hub out of a 400 transmission uh, that goes in the forward drum. Uh, we always replace them with Sonex uh, drums, so uh, we have them extra. But you can see here we took a rod out of a motor. We took uh, a roller lifter set up out of, a, out of my motor. And then we have some 350 rocker arms. And we got some uh, LS1 push rods that we got little feet here basically. Got some little arms we're starting to put here. And then we'll come here. And we'll put some little eyeballs sticking out here, something like that, to try to give it some look, some little eyebrows and stuff like that. So we started getting a few of these made. We're probably going to make four of them. Uh, we started getting this one made here, too. We got a little man here. We got some roller lifters, an LS1 rod, uh, LS valve springs, LS rocker arms. Then we have some valves uh, out of the LS head that stick up for legs. So you have to make seven total. Yeah, seven total trophies. So we're not sure how we're going to design these yet, if we're going to take the pistons off or what we're going to do. We're still in the game of trying to figure things out. But we also, we got one over here that we're going to make. I've been working on this one for a while. Uh, I just keep putting it back because I start on it. But this is going to be a little girl. Uh, you can see she's got her dress on. She's got her legs. Uh, we'll extend her body. We'll, we'll start making some arms and put on her and stuff like that. She'll be about this tall. Uh, when we get done, we made a little boy. Teresa made a little boy last year. Yeah, I think we did. We make a little girl too. We made a, another one for. Uh, yeah, we did. We did for uh, somebody for Christmas. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Once we get started, we enjoy it. We kind of do it after work. Uh, gives us something to do. Like we don't need something else to do. <laughs> kind of crazy. But anyway, we got Anthony's uh, truck in the shop. Uh, we're gonna take his 4L60E apart. They're from Colorado getting ready for winter time and stuff like that. Four, we want to check his four wheel drive out. Um, when they get snow up there, guys, they get snow. Like I said here, uh, right off the, the mountains and stuff, we get storms. It was 80 yesterday. You know, I think it was like 78 yesterday morning and, and here it's 48 this morning. So we get some crazy storms here. we're gonna have a bad winter. We could have. Now we do have a TMBX torque converter here and you pull them out, they'll have a tag on them right here. And they're going to go by that right there, TMBX. We already have a converter setting out over here from B&I. Let me go grab it real quick. And it'll say uh, TMBX right on the box when we get it. And you can see here, TMBX. So that tells me this converter is identical to the one that's in that car or in that vehicle. So, But anyway, we got... Uh, our bands, our Z-Pack, we got all of our bushings. We've got everything here that we're putting in this, uh, plus whatever else we need. Uh, 
Like I said, I just lay everything out and give you a general idea of what we start putting in these things. Just, I'd say that's bare minimum. A lot of parts going in these units. We're keeping a lot of parts in stock now to just get them out the door. So, now being it's a four wheel drive, it has a, an adapter on the back. Normally you'd have a tail housing in the boat here. If it was a two wheel drive, your shaft would be a little bit longer. So, you'll have a rubber seal right here. Your overhaul kit, the seal will have an uh, orange groove around the outer edge of it. That's how you identify it. The GM is just a factory black one. How many miles does this have on it? This here had 193,000 miles. 193,000 miles, guys. Now, I don't know if he bought it brand new, uh, what the maintenance schedule was on it or anything like that. Some people don't maintenance their transmissions. They just put gas in their car and motor oil, and that poor tranny never gets thought about. But anyway, the lockup seal here is really flat on the edge. You can see here. Uh, the uh, seal, the new version like that, that one there is, we don't see a lot of seal failure like we did the early design with the smaller seal. <coughs> Trying to figure out how to word that. <coughs> the early ones really shrink down into the groove where uh, these here don't do it as bad. They just kind of square out and it's not as round, but they don't shrink as bad as the, the early ones did. And physically cause lockup failure from shrinking. Now we don't have any fluid in our connector here, which is good. I tell you guys, when our fair comes to town, we come in over the weekend, and when it comes to town, our weather changes the exact same day. I don't know what it is about it, but it's it does that every time here in Amarillo when the fair shows. We don't ever have a sunny fair. No, we don't. It's, uh, we have, we have, but I can't tell you when. Yeah, that's how often. <laughs> so, just your factory servo. Now, we are gonna put a, a Corvette servo in this one here. Uh, just so uh, we know the band's going to have a lot of uh, pressure up uh, surface area and stuff on that servo. We want to give him everything we can put in here, but we don't want a firm shift and tranny. We just sump want something that uh, is going to work really nice. Uh, still pull a trailer, push snow around, or whatever he's going to be doing. We've got a lot of guys that come from Colorado that run plows on the front of their truck. Stuff, so they do a lot of that low speed pushing and stuff and that's when we'll take and uh, put the five pinion planets in the back and stuff like that that way uh, it's a lot stronger in low gear because that's where he's going to be pushing you know all that snow around so really clean tranny Either he takes care of it or somebody's been taking care of it. Factory filter. Not factory, but I'm trying to see if that's a factory gasket, but no, nah, it's been replaced. A lot of these gaskets, they're, they're on there so good you gotta buff them off. But that one come off pretty easy, so hard to tell if it's factory or not. He may have tried to serve it with this big position. Yeah. Yeah. So on these here, before you do any servicing, you always want to run a computer check, especially if your check engine light's on, because it could be something minor, and you think it's something major. So, and we're going to get our PWM solenoid here out. Now we are going to block the valve in here on every one that we do. I had a guy call me the other day and was telling me that. Uh, 
his tranny would work fine, cold, lockup would work fine, but then all of a sudden he would start losing lockup, and then it would go into limp mode. And uh, I told him to block that valve and see if it takes care of it. And he called me back and he said, Richard, it took care of it. I said, I told you that it would. Because that valve, even the bore gets a little bit war where your PWM valve is. If you block it, it'll block it in a spot where it won't leak by, and then it works perfect. So, especially on these later models, because when the seal don't shrink here, because on the early models when the seal shrinks here, you can lose lockup right off the bat, especially when it gets uh, warmed up. Work cold, fine. Warm up, lose it. And these later ones, you don't have that issue because the seal don't shrink. So what I do is I go in here and look at this uh, PWM valve and block that thing. And next thing you know, your lockup never fades away anymore when it gets hot. We have our three longest bolts here. And all these, you have one little short one here, excuse me, two. Some of them will come with this uh, oil protector from your dipstick. Keeps your makes it easy to check the fluid that way it doesn't splash on it when it's running. And you have all your 10 millimeters here. And you're gonna have your some little short eight millimeters, and then you're gonna have your long eight millimeters. I ain't done that in a while. Now I'm going to take the detent spring off. Now your pillow switch here, this is the later version. You can clean this up. There was no codes for it or anything like that. You can change your seals around and clean up and reuse it. There's your temperature sensor right there. Get in here and see if anybody's played with this thing. Now your lockup valves all factory stuff, so we'll get in here and block this up where it doesn't work anymore. Now this is our forward accumulator here. We want to look at that. Your engagement valve. And we have a plastic piston. Like I said, you don't have to replace all these. If your bores wore out right here, get rid of it. If you're uh, running us, all the ones we use are aluminum now, so it doesn't matter. But I mean, if you're at home and, and the bore's good and you don't can't replace it, can't get one, you can use this back. Just make sure this pin doesn't wobble like crazy in here. I like say a lot of these videos I'm doing for, is for people at home, so that way they know what they can use and can't use. So. Got your pressure control solenoid, your shift solenoids, and then here are your three, your three two down shift solenoid here. A lot of people use my videos to build trannies now, guys. I mean, a lot of people. Pretty cool. Now you can see here where your check balls were. One there, there's one there, there's one there, 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 one here, and one here. Of course that one rolled away. But you can see you're starting to get a little bit of wear here. This plate is repairable though. Check balls out of there. Somebody asked me if I throwed all my check balls away. No, we hang on to all of them. Sometimes there's a shortage actually. Yeah. When you got to tear down a core to get check balls, that's pretty desperate there, guys, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. 
but we do have a round hole, square hole style valve body plate. Now these cases are different too. If you're ever needing a case, if you're trying to put something together, now your round hole and square hole case is different. So you gotta remember that. Now you noticed here this piston was all the way to the top. So that's gonna be a good spring assembly to use back. That way I don't have to space it up. And then our new piston, of course, you know, has a, a longer shank on it, gives it more stability to stay straight in the bore. You stick that in there. Look at that almost to the top. And you can take and put a spacer on there and bring this up just a little bit more if you want to get it flush with the top. I like my accumulator to start working right off the bat. That way the band starts applying right off the bat. So, pretty simple. Then we have our overdrive accumulator piston here. Everybody knows we block all these. We don't beat a check ball down in there. Pretty simple just to stack another one on top. I always like to space them apart about 30 thousandths and then set it down in there and then it'll be perfectly flush. Throw the spring away. Actually, some of these springs here, I think I've been putting in the 400 valve bodies now. So. Now, if you don't have any fluid here, you can, if you need to change this out, you can cut this off here, put a fit all solenoid here. You always want to clean it though and make sure you have a rattle in there because there's a little valve that moves. See here, we do have a fourth gear check ball right in here too. Let's get my magnet and get that out and show you. Actually, you can see it right there. You can put it back in, leave it out, doesn't matter. I actually leave it in there. It's not going to be working or doing anything, but it is in there. We'll take and push the parking paw down, turn the output shaft, that way it locks in. Move the lever out of the way get right to that bolt. Now we had a guy bend one of these here the other day accidentally while he was rebuilding it and when he put it manual low it would try to put it in park. It would ratchet just click 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 and I told him that he, he accidentally bent this lever here and, which it did fix it when he seen what he, when he did wrong there. That's some pretty oil, guys. That really is. That's a pretty rough looking table, though. I need to take it out to dinner sometime. <laughs> it works hard every day. Like I say, guys, you can see here how we have fluid coming out around these bottom bolts here because all the pressure on this pump is, is through here. It's not through these here, but we do silicone uh, after we change this O-ring right here. We'll put a little silicone on here. That way we have a double seal around here. It's mainly around here. If you ever get a leak after you put one in. Yeah. Nice and snug in there. Now this is a not a doesn't have an input speed sensor in it or nothing like that. So good for any type of wear. Just some shadowing, looks really nice. Put us a little drain stop here so we don't hear fluid dripping. <laughs> That's 
nerve-wracking. Trying to get this boost valve out of here, see which one we have. Put my glasses on where I can see. Now some of these uh, could be a two-ringer, a three-ringer. And what I mean by that is this right here, the two ringer. So if you got a three, you can put a three ringer in here, and uh, it's actually up, upgrading your boost valve assembly to a better boost valve. If you got a one, put a two. If you got a two, put a three. If you want to go better, put a 500 boost valve from Transco or Sonex. So now on the Later versions, once you change that boost valve, you're committed because the input speed sensor is in the way and you can't ever get it back out because the speed sensor covers the hole. It comes in here through here and covers it. So, Also, if you put a 500 boost valve, it'll come with a new pressure spring and stuff in there too. Now this is, these pumps here, remember guys, we always silicone put just a fine line of silicone right here uh, between your vent and your pressure side right here. It's mainly from here to here. That way, uh, this is your vent circuit and this is, goes right over to your pressure regulator valve and stuff through here. So you have a lot of pressure here. If, if you have any leakage through here, crazy leakage where you might have forgot to flat file your pump or something like that, I mean, it's, that's why we put just a little bit through there. And we don't have no vent leaking problems ever. I mean, back in the day, I've seen it happen. Vehicle come back, 3,000 mile service, see a little seeping out of the vent hole, and here we go. So we just eliminated it by doing all that stuff, so. Now you can see here, this converter definitely should have been spaced in. It's just barely catching half the, the pump rotor here. So. We go back with it, we'll definitely look at that. We look at all of them anyway, because 90% of them have to be uh, spaced to where they're right. Get our pump slide out. Starting to see wear through here, a lot of the uh, bluing's coming off, coating. We see a lot of wear through here too, guys. You notice this side here doesn't look like it's ever been used. But if you start seeing it right through here, coming around, stops right here. We see a lot of that. And if you come over here on the pump stator part of it, you'll start seeing it right through here too. See it? There's, from there to there. You'll never see it on this side. It's always through here. It's kind of kind of odd how it does it, but it's where the. That's why you want your your pin right here to be really good shape because if your your pins wore out. Yeah, see, and this is totally wore out. Try to get that off there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can see that. You can grab that with a screwdriver right there. And that is what lets this move. Instead of it being perfectly straight, it's, it's cocked. See, so the pump body looks really good, too. Got your little spring. Pump body looks good. You can scotch right that up. You can see that little chatter mark right there. You can't feel it, but you can see it starting to happen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? You, you see that stuff? Yeah, that's weird. Mm -hmm. But all the pieces in here will be brand new. We put it back in there. The bushings and stuff like that. Get this out real quick. Oops. Our band anchor. That old band's yep. cooked, ain't it? <laughs> yep. Definitely. But you can see this here sets in there like that. It sets in the case. And then your servo comes in here and grabs a hold of it. Like that. Just a stock band. But you can see that thing's really cooked. Woo, look at there. Got some gold in there, guys. Look at them, that beautiful <laughs> five pinion planet. What is this? Oh, it's a Denali, that's why. 
Yeah. I, I didn't realize that the, it was the Denali. That's Denali. Yeah, that's why it's got five pinion planets. Lucky man. Yep. Because to put them in there now, them things are getting all that stuff's getting expensive, expensive. But means that pretty much the, nobody's ever probably touched this no. transmission. No. A lot of guys. I mean, they. If we brought this vehicle in, we'd have to, and it didn't have it in, we'd have to upgrade it in there. Because the vehicle's so heavy, and it's got a 6.2 in it. Mm -hmm. I believe it's something with bigger motors, so. And this little bearing here, guys, you really want to check out really good for any type of wear, because this thing will whine and park in neutral, and you think it's a pump whine, it's just that little bearing there. And of course, you have your spacer right here, this selective these here are normally uh, numbered 68 69 they don't have very many options here very very few these trannies here you don't move them around much you very seldom have to mess with the end clearance on them you have to check it though and see what you got because you never know who's been in here I think those three four clutches burn up too. Oh, it looks that way. Yeah, it's it's starting to get smoked too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this thing, he he limped it in here, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Load springs are still pretty tall, but you always want to check them with a new one, so because they could be knocked down quite a bit. See, that one's knocked down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we buy them by the bagfuls. engine brake clutch and we have our forward clutches After all that, I thought one was missing but now they're all there teeth are starting to strip though you see the edges of them starting to peel back That's we crazy. see a lot of lot a lot of times we see that from uh, not coming to a stop when we put it in gear from reverse to drive is what usually causes that somebody just a little early Putting it in the gear. Uh, fast idles too, if you got a fast idle problem. Mm -hmm. I'd say a lot of times we have wear here from this brass washer. You notice this one here has a lip on it, a really big lip. Do you see that? Yeah. Well, that's already wore plumb out. If you take this one off, you can see. See, it looks brand new. Well, this one's wore so bad that it physically locks on this hub. See, it's locked on. It's got its own pattern. See? Mm -hmm. Well, this one here, see, it'll just slide all around. It's actually got a groove in here. You can feel it right there now. That's why it grabbed see it. See it? Mm hmm. Because this will set in that groove. Yeah. See? You want to check here for any type of chattering marks or anything like that. Scotch brought that up. Change your bushings. Look on both sides of this sun gear for anywhere. You have a load side and a coast side, so. Same way here on this outer race, you want to scotch bright it up. Look for any funny wear. Funny wear? Funny wear. Wear pattern. Got bonded pistons and stuff in there too. I'm going to show you something, guys. I, I talked about this the last time in videos, but I don't know if a lot of people ever catches on. Let me get this snap ring out of here real quick. Come on. There we go. This little rubber seal right here on a 4L60E and your 700s, they changed this seal, right? When they changed it, they also changed the hole in the, in the output shaft here. And I'll show you that. So right now we have a roller bearing here, a roller hub style 
We've got a beautiful five pinion planet. Now you want to check this bearing here. You can set this down in here like that and push on that. And you can feel any type of roughness if that bearing's going bad. Looks really good, your five pinion planet. Check your pins and washers. Make sure there ain't any type of wobbling or wear. These always wear, they don't wear here anymore because they harden the heck out of that, but now they didn't harden it all the way through, so now we have wear in somewhere else that we never had a problem with. So it's wear here in the splines. See, on the early design, they didn't have problems here. They had problems here. So they just shortened their heat cycle a little bit on it. And on your ring gear here, you want to look for any type of wear on both sides too. Get this shell out of here. Now the later versions did come with a hardened shell, uh, but you still want to flip it over and look here. I, I see more wear here now. You can see that big lip right there than I do in the splines anymore. So we, we still want to replace this because this is where your nice roller bearing runs at and that's what causes that wear right there. So it'll mess with your end clearance if you don't change it. It'll be off. You change it, it'll start tightening things up. We have a plastic four tab washer here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get up here. Somebody said I can heat that with a torch and it'll bring that back up. I've seen somebody talking about that on our channel. Yeah, I did too. Um, It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Now we're gonna build this lower clutch pack back factory, leave the wave in there. Just put all new clutches and stuff in here. We've got a sun gear here. We're gonna look on both sides, make sure we don't have no wear. We replaced 90% of them too. Then we have this beautiful five pinion planet. Mm -hmm. Beautiful five pinion planet. Then we have our lower ring gear and hub mm -hmm. bearings. You can see here they put they stake the shaft in there that way they can set it in there and the shaft won't fall out the bottom. So that's why that's there. Then we have our lower sprag assembly. So you want to look here for any type of wear. Scotch brought this up really nice. Put a new sprag in there. Okay. I'm going to go grab a shaft. Guys, really quick. I'm going to be back in five seconds. We're counting down. You're counting down. Hopefully I didn't nobody stole my keys. Okay, we're back. I had to, <laughs> I didn't realize the trailer was locked, so, but I, I had to go get this to show you guys out of the trailer. But anyway, if you notice these two shafts, even though this is a two-wheel drive shaft, this is a four-wheel drive shaft, whether a 700 4 60 e I want you to look at this lube circuit hole and into this shaft right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. One of them is here one of them is on the ledge see it right there mm -hmm. this seal right here is designed for the one on the ledge if you put this seal here on the one with the hole this seal will set right on the hole and, you covered it up. and now you just uh well you, you created a big leak in your loop circuit what this does is the tranny leak uh, loops from the front to the rear 
So this basically, when the seal's in there, you have your other lube hole here. See that right there? So your lube oil comes through here, seals through that seal, and then goes through this hole to lubricate all your rear planets and stuff like that. So if you put the wrong seal in here, it's gonna all leak out the side right here and not pressure up to pressure up like it should to lubricate your planets and stuff like that. So just remember, if, you got, if you're working on a 700 and you got a 4L60E seal, input drum seal to output shaft, you cannot use it because the whole, they're in two different spots. Right there, down, down. That's something to know, guys. That way, if you got parts laying around, you're building a 700 at home, you got a 4060E kit over here, you grab that lube washer seal, you put it in there, boom, you take them down the highway, and next thing you know, your planets are gone. So I kind of wanted to throw that in there, that way you guys knew more about that, because a lot of times people don't catch that small stuff, the little stuff is what gets you. But anyway, we got tons of work to do. I gotta get this thing built and put back in. Teresa, definitely, thank you for a video. And Hanny's over there crashed out again, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. We enjoy you guys. Tons of videos to come. Y'all have a great day.